surgical, violent, unstoppable, a swarm of two, legendary throughout the cosmos for the quarter mass pit massacre. That's a little intense. Let's stick to this. Hello, everyone. My name is Paige and welcome to episode three of The Breakdown, where I showcase a figure so you can decide if it fits within your collection. I don't like it. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Mezco 112 Rumble Society Krieg, the Murder Hornet Edition. Now, I wanted to send a huge thank you to Mezco Toys for gifting me an advanced copy of these two so I can have some time to mess around with them and enjoy. I say huge because they also sent something else that I guess we can save for later, huh? huh? But let's focus on the golden gift at hand and give this dynamic duo of the cosmos the attention that they deserve. Now, this comes in the standard Rumble Society all black packaging with the Rumble Society on the left and right panels, gold trim on the top and bottom, Krieg the Murder Hornet sticker on the front, thankfully, because I can tell you what, if I line all these up, I never know which one is which. Quick little nerd note for you the Pale Driver is the only other Krieg member with the MDX exclusive sticker. The Blood Force has the Asia Gold exclusive, and the Spartan doesn't even have one at all. And now you know. Trademark gold magnetic medallion on the front that keeps the flap secure, as well as the gold exclusive Mezco sticker that people think it adds $100 extra on the aftermarket pricing. Don't be that guy or girl. Oh, I always love doing this. Safety instruction, black tissue paper. And inside you're gonna get three trays. Tray one, of course, is gonna have your figure, some weapons and accessories. Tray two has the extra accessories. And of course, tray three is going to have your base bag and extra stuff. Quick little rotating shot, allowing you to get the full effect of this figure and allowing me to prep for the next scene. So right off the bat, the first thing that I see is the yellow and black combo. I think it's a great overall look uh, tactically. I don't think it really gives you an advantage, but I guess that didn't really matter during the quarter mass pit massacre, right? Uh, even though a majority of the armor is bright yellow, there are little subtle hints of wash around the areas, like especially in the pouches and the straps. There also seem to be some armor pieces that are a little bit more subdued, which shifts nicely to the armor accent points, and some of them are also painted differently an area of improvement i think they really tried to do with this figure if you remember the first uh, figure from the line was the blood force one and a lot of collectors were quick to point out that there was a lack of detail in the paint uh, i'm not sure if that was part of the storyline angle uh, where one is a little bit more cleaner than the others like you never see the crimson guard in star wars have a speck of dirt on them you know if they did the emperor would light them up but as the line went on, we're starting to see more paint apps that were applied to the pale drivers. And that's very apparent in this version. Now, starting off with the head, you'll notice that the helmet design is completely different, which I, I think it's a great idea. This is something that collectors voiced their concern about, that being that the figures, even though they were classified as different factions, they were pretty much the same figure, but just in different colors. And I think this subtle change in the helmet and the wings is what actually helps it stand out more from the other characters. That and the bright ass yellow colors. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love it. It looks really good. Now the helmet has this translucent honeycomb shaped visor. Uh, there's a split peg style that allows you to open and close it just like the previous versions. Uh, one of the things that I think that's overlooked is the amount of detailed sculpt work inside the helmet. Because obviously it's inside the helmet and I can see where people would miss that little detail. But you can really get a sense of how much work was put into it because you could see them sculpting out the head padding and also the instrument panels inside the helmet. Again, this is your standard head that we've gotten with the previous versions. Um, the head can almost go about 360, but it's hindered by the armor plating from the back of the figure. Now, because of the Lido feature in the head, which is just a modified ball peg with a light, rotation is mainly what you're going to be getting in terms of movement. There is a little bit of side to side, but like I said, it's mainly because of that design. But again, if you had a helmet on, how much would you really be able to tilt your head? There's a lighter feature that comes with this figure just like the other ones. It's pretty easy to install. All you need to do is take off the back panel using a small screwdriver. They give you the three batteries that you'll need. Drop those batteries in there, flip the switch, and... <laughs> Kidding, it doesn't make that power up sound, but it does light up the chest area as well as the vents on the front and back. The head portrait also lights up as well, and this is something different because of the honeycomb visor design. Uh, so I thought that was a pretty unique feature. Now, if this look doesn't work for you, no problem. Just be careful, but you can always take some sticky tack and put it in the crevice of the eye or kind of block out that eye so you won't see it through the visor. 
Moving on down to the shoulders, uh, one of the unique designs that I don't think really gets talked about a lot is the shoulder pads. They have this pull out swivel technology, kind of like other figures do with the drop down leg method. And what this does is allow you to have more range of movement without breaking or snapping the shoulder pads. When they're pushed in aesthetically, it just pulls the whole figure together a little bit better. But when they're out, you're able to get the range of motion in the arm area laterally and rotation wise that you need in the shoulder area. The arms can rotate backwards and forwards pretty far. Now, they can also rotate upwards past the T-pose, and this is where that shoulder pad design comes in handy. And that's a good thing because this is a flying character, and so having the ability to pull off those flight poses really helps sell the character. You are going to get some chest and ab rotation, which I think is pretty amazing because the electronics for the light up feature are located in this section of the figure. I did see a video of a guy breaking his down for a custom and I was actually surprised that there was any movement at all because it runs the risk of possibly either disconnecting or breaking the wire. But then again, I think the design is pretty good at balancing the light up feature and the range of motion that they give you. Now the back panel also has a weapon holder that can be utilized to either house the proton cannon or the cyber site suffering succotash. Mesco also did a design upgrade that allows you to place another holder with a node that has the wings attached to it. Wings are translucent yellow with panel lines, pieces, and bolts that give it a lot of dimension. The wings are also on ball socket joints that allow you to position them in different ways to give you multiple looks. The figure also comes with a poncho that has a posable bendy wire in it, uh, and it also gives you a sticker sheet that allows you to customize the poncho as well. There's a lot of good movement in the uh, shoulder area, as you can see. Uh, he also does have bicep rotation. This figure is double jointed, and you can feel it in the elbow piece area, but because of the armor, we're not going to be able to get that past 90 degrees. On the wrist, you'll also notice that there's some big holes. This is where you can put that energy shield. Uh, this is a translucent piece, and once it's put in place, it feels pretty secure. There is also rotation at the forearm and wrist. Mezco uses their standard split ball rotating joint for the hands. You're gonna get one pair of fists. You're gonna get one pair of knife holding hands, left and right. You'll get one pair of gun holding hands. And you're gonna get a posing hand. Now with these hands, you can use them to either hold items such as the Cyber Sith, and this also comes with an effects ease that can be placed on top of it. You get one MF-112 Proton Cannon. This has a blast piece that also goes into the little hole. Uh, one of the things that collectors have voice concerns about is that the figures only come with the left hand trigger hands. And there is a right hand that if you fudge it, it kind of looks like you have a right trigger hand, uh, but the finger doesn't go into there. But it does give you another option as far as visually. To get a side blaster and you can use that blast effect with this as well uh the blaster of the barrel also slides back and forth also get one mwth taser with taser effect and don't tase me bro don't tase me bro. you get a knife that comes with a sheath and you can put that in the boot get a couple of communication devices and you also get five different versions of combat grenades moving on to the leg there is quite a bit of range uh, you can actually kick forward and he can also maintain balance while he's on one leg. Uh, you also notice that you can swing the leg outward and that there's also hip and thigh rotation. Not going to get as much range of motion going backwards as you did forward, but you can see that the knees are double jointed. Uh, but again, they're not going to be able to extend all the way back because of the armor design. You get pouches on the left, a blaster holder that's on the side, and that blaster that we talked about earlier that fits inside the holster and can be held securely. Moving down to the ankles, and you get a pretty good range of motion out of the ankles. I know Mezco catches a lot of flack for the range of motion in that area. Now, I don't know if it's the design, but there's a shin guard right here, and there's enough of a gap. And what you can do is just kind of work it. 
your foot may come off, but it's not a big deal. It just can pop right back on, but at least it seems like it gives it a little bit more range of motion. Take some time and jump into some quick size comparison. These are different bodies for each one of them compared. So you're probably going to have a smaller teen body. You'll have the slim body, a medium body, and then I'll show you one with a large body. And just in case it hasn't been done, quick money shot. Here's what the team would look like all together. It, hold on, wait a second. What are you doing in, ah, get out of there. Okay, there we go. There are 13 figures and the dimension for this dial piece is probably around, I think 48 uh, width. And I think it's like 32 deep. So it kind of gives you an idea in scale of this squad and it's massive <laughs> lights on lights off lights on lights off but now that we have the 13 knocked out i think it's time to move on to the 100 plus battalion like in the comic right <laughs> yeah that would be the ultimate krieg flex and if you can do it without photoshop please tag me because i would love to see it now, in case you're wondering, this was an MDX exclusive and it went up as a buy it now on April 13th, 2022. And it was only on sale for about three hours uh, and then it converted to waitlist status. So if you're currently looking for this figure, unfortunately, you're either going to have to go through the waitlist or you're going to have to find somebody that's selling it on the aftermarket. I always tell people to sign up for the waitlist because why? It's free and you have nothing to lose. And you never know. There's a possibility it might convert. I've had quite a few for me uh, convert in the past, so there's always that option. But that wraps up this episode of the breakdown of the Creek 13 Murder Hornet Edition. I hope that everybody that wanted one of these was able to get them and everybody that is looking for them is able to find them. And that's it, fellow collectors. My name is Paige. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this video has provided you with enough information and visual stimulation for you to decide if this offering is right for you and your collection. And if not, remember, they're just toys. So have fun.